Last week, we go one of three on our three best prop bets, which seems to be the trend over the last couple of weeks, trying to crack at least two. But it was uh, uh, Jafel Fio, you'll buy submission coming through for us at plus 140, getting the tap over Ode Osborne. Chelsea Chandler got the positions on the top uh, on top position uh, against uh, Josiane Nunes, but she was unable to muster up much of a TKO for us to catch that there. And then Brian Barbarina seemed to have no shot in terms of trying to get that knockout here over at Ger- uh, Gerald Mearshart. The long shot did come through for us, which I'm very happy about. Uh, it was Mike Davis by submission at plus six. 625 from the jump when he cracked Natan Levy and got engaged in the grappling room. I knew for a fact we we're going to end up hitting that sub prop, especially considering how much we saw Davis really uh, chasing the grappling situations and looking for submissions. So very happy to hit that. I was hoping that we were going to be able to catch the sub round three at plus 2,800. Unfortunately, Natan Levy was not able to see the third round and we get Davis to cash it uh, just a sub prop period for us at plus 625. Let's see if we can get the long shot to hit for us once again. But first... Let's get through the top three prop bets that I got for you guys. First of which is going to be Trey Ogden by submission at, or sorry, by decision, I should say, at plus 155. I think Carl Holabaugh is a very tough out and a very difficult guy to put away. And I think we'll see Ogden utilize a very safe approach here in terms of utilizing a lot of lateral movement jabbing and dra- dropping his one two down the pipe against Holobaz. Holobaz trying to track him down and get him to engage in a pocket exchange but then it'll be the ultimate uh it'll ultimately be the level changes and takedowns of Trey Ogden that's going to get him to secure some top time control time and grind this fight out against a like I said very tough Kurt Holobaz who's a BJJ black belt just like Trey Ogden so I think we might see their grappling kind of get cancelled out on the mat but hopefully a lot of that is with Ogden securing that top position half card side mount whatever it is just grind this fight out and uh show the veteran uh, a bit of a veteran lesson in the sense there so uh ogden by decision will be the first prop at plus 155 the second prop that i got for you guys is going to be luis paguelo by knockout at plus 315 i think he has the ability to slow down grind out and eventually finish uh fernando padilla as he continuously walks him down and forces padilla onto his back foot we know padilla does not do the greatest in deep waters he's only won two of his 15 fights on the scorecards uh, a lot of his losses also coming by decision just like it did last time around against Kyle Nelson but unlike Kyle Nelson we'll see Pedroela go out there and just put the pressure on him from jump Nelson was okay with just boxing him up from distance landing some leg kicks crashing the pocket every now and then but Pedroela is going to be on that gas from the first minute to the last and I expect it to produce a knockout victory for him here which is why I'm taking a shot at plus 315. The third and final prop bet that I got for you guys here is going to be Justin Taffa by knockout at plus 200. His money line sits around plus 155, but Justin Taffa is only won by knockout, and I think that's going to come to fruition once again here. It might not be the first, it might not be the second, but I think it could be by at least the third round where Carl Williams start to slow down. His grapple-heavy approach does not end up working on Justin Taffa late, and I'm not just saying that because Taffa has a 100% takedown defense rate, He's only faced two takedown attempts throughout his UFC career. Uh, He might get taken down, but I don't think that we'll see Carl Williams finish him as Williams normally doesn't finish his opponents, especially when he takes that grapple-heavy approach. I think we'll see Tafa eventually muster up the ability to put together big combination here, big punches, catch Carl Williams slowing down, and then eventually knock him out, cashing that plus 200 ticket. The long shot that I have for you guys here is definitely a long shot. We're going to go with Mick Parkin, round three, plus 1,200. I even locked in Mick Parkin, I believe it was by submission, round three at plus 3,000 earlier this week. But for the sake of this podcast, we're going to do uh, just the round three straight up at plus 1,200. Again, I think he has a better gas tank, uh, better overall game against Usman. We've seen Usman slow down in the past, but luckily for him, he's been facing some guys that have worse gas tanks than him. Parkin is a guy that will never settle for a bad position like Jake Collier did in the third round of Usman's last fight Parkin is going to continuously make Usman work eventually put him in bad positions and I think he ultimately subs him in the final round here whether it's with an arm triangle choke or a rear naked choke but I think Usman's going to give up a bad spot and Parkin will take full advantage of it here cashing our round three prop at plus 1200 there you guys go full week of content down for UFC Vegas 89 make sure you guys check out the YouTube channel for the rest of the content 
all the other great things that I draw for it. But not to mention, we got Bellator going down, uh, probably going down right now as we're speaking, as it started at 1 p.m. Eastern on Friday, um, and then LFA and Octagon on Saturday, not to mention UFC as well. Octagon and LFA break down strictly on the Lock of the Night Patreon page if you're looking for that. Otherwise, good luck on all your action this weekend, folks, and I'll see you guys Saturday after the fights wrap up for my immediate reaction show. See you guys then. Peace.